We get a tiny house, a blessed start. Blessed start indeed. Yeah, that's a, cl a classic way to lose with Echo Form, though. Enemies attacking you on turn one. Really wanted an anchor or a boot sequence for that defect. Tough layout here. Really like Charge Battery as a card. Very efficient card. Lots of block, and then the next turn energy is very useful too. And the upgraded Zap is an additional boon to our uh, energy output. So we got a really good, really good tiny house start here. First pick, go for the uh, Hello World, actually. Interesting. Generating one common card each turn. Pretty good for the defects. But I think Go for the Eyes and Rip and Tear also do an admirable job. I'm in the mood to show off what Hello World can do. Tiny House actually better than the starter relics? I would tend to say so. The bonus gold especially is very nice at the start of the run. Very, very nice indeed. Pay 87 gold for an FTL. Honestly, yes. I need all the help I can get right now. An FTL is, it's kind of like a free attack. Let's get a remove transform upgrade. Let's. Hmm. Tempting to upgrade our charge battery, actually. It gives us such a premium block card for the rest of the act. I'm trying to uh, trying to go this way. But I think a transform could also be very good here. Let's try the, the block card upgrade. Often find my defect runs don't get an upgraded block card quickly enough. My mod's just quality of life? Basically, yes. Quality of life, information for myself and viewers like you. But I don't use any mods to change the gameplay in any significant way. Double FTL. Now, let's take the rebounds. Alright, hello world. What do you got for me? Another charge battery. The power. Then draw into it. Take the guaranteed. Rather than the uncertainty. That was the right choice. Very unusual fight here. I feel like I've turned down darkness too much lately. Though I don't like the card very much. It's not in this situation. Darkness orbs charge up over time and then when evoked unleash all the damage at once. Could be pretty good. want the charge battery on top for this turn. The Zid, thank you so much for the 13 months and the Prime sub. Check this out. Rebound, charge battery, draw it, put it back on top again for next turn. And then charge battery, hologram. Actually, I should have hologrammed the rebound, maybe. Just charge battery again this turn. So double charge battery to block both Attack turns from the Lagavulin. We played one card four times in two turns. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Rick, thank you so much for 40 months of support. All the months. How about a compile driver? It's card draw. 
decent with darkness. I guess Sweeping Beam is technically our first AoE card. Ew. Actually a pretty good Sweeping Beam and upgrade Sweeping Beam. But I'll take uh, Compiled River and upgrade Darkness. And I'll even bottle the Darkness so that it's decent. Sweeping Beam, though, you know? Bottle Darkness is actually quite good. Guaranteeing that this Dark Orb gets charged up on turn one is a pretty powerful thing. It also guarantees that it's the front orb, making it uh, possible to immediately evoke it with dual cast, should we draw it. Ugh. And why? Actually, wait, this might work out, because now the dark dual cast is a bit more charged up. Sentry's fight went pretty well. We pick up a Singing Bowl, letting us skip cards for max HP. We're offered Vision, Compiled River, Hello World number two. I, for one, will take a Vision here, letting us remove or upgrade it to evoke our orbs to gain energy and draw cards per orb that we get rid of. I'm not even going to think about Darkstone Fury after I hate that thing. No, thank you. Set up the fancy again. Let's do it. Rebound, rebound, charge battery. That puts rebound and charge battery on top of the deck. Now we, you guessed it, rebound, charge battery. I could compile over and draw it again, but I'm just going to block regular style. We'll use the charge battery. You guessed it. Next turn. Charge battery. Draw one card. Draw two more cards. And I'll just go leave. Could have used Fission to draw more cards there, but it would have removed the Dark Orb without evoking it, and I just want to evoke it with Dual Cast here. We pick up a question card, a little bit of anti-synergy with Singing Bull, kind of. Now, if we don't want any of the cards we're offered, we can skip them to gain max HP. I think with Compiled River and Fission, we do want a Frost Orb generating card. Cool Headed is fine, if not ideal. Yeah. And we'll swap the Bleak Pot for a Block Pot. It's just better. Yeah, Darkness trivialized Lagavulin, and honestly, this upgraded Charge Battery has trivialized a lot of stuff, too. Hmm. Awkward. So I'll just go Darkness, Defend, Defense. It doesn't break the block on anybody, but it does kill two of them when I get dual cast. Good. Correct draw order. Nothing! That's right, that's what we skipped. Nothing at all. Okay, we already took our cool-headed. Do I need a Streamline or a Tempest or a Cold Snap? Not really, although Tempest kind of works with Fission. Let's take the Max Health. Upgrade the Fission. And perhaps the cool-headed is our next upgrade. Good enough. We'll get rid of this. Bring him 
closer to death. Ancient pot's pretty whatever. Beam cell versus hologram, always a tough choice. This definitely feels like a deck for hologram, since darkness plus will always be in the discard pile. Also good to get back the zap, the FTL, the rebound, anything. Needs an upgrade though. Darkstone Periapt, why? Fighting Guardian? Yeah, I'll create the hologram then. Oops. Order? Supposed to be compelled to reverse, I think. Well, that's just rude. Hologram the dual cast again, or I can hologram the darkness. Let's hologram the darkness. Zap. Come on, vision. Please. There it is. GG. Highest cog, echo form, or seek. All pretty dang good options. I don't think the all for one fits. It's back Zap and FTL, that's about it. The bias cog is huge focus. Echo form lets us duplicate cards or seek. Lets us find anything in the draw pile, put it in play. Personally, thinking about biased here, since we have somewhat decent orb generation. Zap, darkness plus, cool headed, and good card draw to go with. Let's click the biased. Bonus points if we can find any way to block focus down. or otherwise maintain the focus in the long term, and that makes Inserter a pretty good take, giving us additional orb slots every two turns. Kind of a long-term plan for this deck. Just needs permanent focus. Of course, Inserter will make it more difficult to evoke the dark orbs, but that's actually not true when they're in the first orb slot. Not in the mood for, I guess I could have taken Curse Key with the uh, blue key already. But I'm not, not down for that at the moment. What we're going to do is hit a shop, hit this fire, and then figure out if we can fight elites or not. If we can't, we can go this way. And if we can, we can go, like, this way. Or maybe fight this one, this one, something like that. So those are some pathing options for us. Should be at 84. Oh yeah, that's right, we are at 84. I just said the title wrong at the start of the day. Heck. Of course, three energy is tough. I'd love to do hollow charge hollow here, but then I can't... Or, uh, charge battery hologram, charge battery, excuse me. But then I don't actually get to do anything. Darkness. Take some damage. Turn could be a lot worse. It's not. Get him. Okay, that actually turned out all right. is can we kill him on the last turn here? Eight 
Exactly, yes. Good. Get all of our money back. And a Cold Snap Plus, now that we have more orb slots, is beautiful. I suppose Leap Plus is not bad either. But I think we want the damage. And the orb generation more. We'll take a Cold Snap Plus. Panacea to go with Bias Cognition. Now you're talking. There's our permanent source of focus. We could even upgrade it to be two points of artifact. And it's a zero energy card. I really like that. Alongside that, we could consider maybe chill, free orb generation, specifically frost orb generation. Really like that with fission. I also really like card remove, but we're definitely buying panacea here. I think I would go chill card remove if I could, but since I can't, it's just going to be the strike removal. I could add another cold snap. Just because one cold snap plus was good doesn't mean the second one for 29 gold is bad, actually. I think we can do without, though. Definitely hard to skip removes. Don't rebound the sap. We'll block the weaken. Hmm. Guess I'll take it, but I'm not happy about it. Spikes. Strike, and then the lightning orbs kill. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Pick up Glacier versus Claw versus Cool Headed. Personally, I think we're in Glacier territory here. Act boss is Collector. Okay. Yeah. That really helps fill up the Frost Orb slots. Now we have uh, probably all the Frost generation we're going to need for a while. The Red Mask Gang. A difficult set of three opponents. If we can kill them, we'll get the Red Mask, applying vulner a week to turn to enemies on turn one, as well as a decent reward here. I'm not going to mess with these two otherwise. Wouldn't actually consider a Claw there, would I? No, not with this deck. No. No, admittedly, no. Uh, we want to get Bear first, I think. Should know Romeo first. Romeo's the challenging one at the moment. This fight could be pretty tough, overall. Hologram Darkness, Hologram Cold Snap. I think we just need to play the Glacier. It means I'm going to take a ton of damage. Damn it. How many block cards in this deck? It's so hard to make a defect deck with the right amount of different things. Too much block, you die. Not enough block, you die. Don't kill bear, you die. Bear, yes! There we go. Not that bad. We took some damage, but the red mask will return that health investment for us. Are we a blizzard deck? We're actually pretty close to being one. He barely stood a chance. Oof. Let's see, we need to upgrade the bias cog. 
Other than that, hmm? be a surprisingly decent blizzard. Blizzard inserter, especially. Slow but steady. Sure, this is gonna hurt us in the short term. Definitely not fighting any of this stuff. We're gonna be going rest site, rest site here. Turbo is actually really good too, right? Actually, yes, on reflection, turbo. That said, the blizzard is not terrible there, just for the record. What blizzard does is allow you to have a, a kind of scaling area damage attack for the later game. Blizzard is absolutely a late game answer card. You really need a lot of frost generation for it to feel any good at all, but if you can make it work, it's pretty powerful. It's a good offense option if you're kind of turtling behind Frost in large quantities, because such decks can often struggle with damage. Heck. Please rebound that place here. Thank you. Double heck. All right, all the frost in the world. You have that kind of deck, how do you not die to Reptomancer? Chill. The answer is chill. Chill generates five frost orbs instantly, and then Blizzard kills everything. Just chill, man. Right. Just loop, man. Loop's actually decent, but needs an upgrade that I don't have. Give to it. Barrage also pretty good. Barrage is like a blizzard that's not dependent on a particular type of orb. You still have to get the orb slots and fill them with something, though. Uh, I think it's resting time. Fast Zion says, I've always found FTL to be a strange card for defect. When is FTL good? FTL is good if you have a kunai. FTL is also very good in Act 1, period. It's just 5 damage, less than a strike, but it's free in the sense that it's zero cost and draws a new card. And that means just 5 extra damage to whatever fight in Act 1 um, could make a huge, huge difference. Beautiful. Love that we rolled uh, double slavers here. That means we're going to be fighting Gremlin Nub plus Taskmaster next for the juicy reward of two relics and a hundred gold. Assuming we can survive. Finally getting our... Uh, Panacea plus biased cognition to work for us. It's a surprisingly challenging thing to do. Oh, Fission lets us get lots of dexterity on our turn, too. Beautiful. This deck can block with the best of them now. Almost an excessive amount of block, quite frankly. Well done, weakling. Time for the real challenge. To victory or death. Um, hmm. Dark Rub's gonna target the front guy here. Is okay, I suppose.
death? Oh, no, no. We will be just fine. Take a little bit of damage, sure, but death, not at all. Um, right? Hmm. We start with cool headed. Get a kill, we would need dual cast. So we either hologram the compile driver, draw two, 50% chance we get it. Actually, technically, Glacier is acceptable as well. Right? Um, compile driver will deal 10. No, that won't kill. But Glacier would be enough block, it won't matter. So I think I do hologram the compile driver here. Draw two more. We get dual cast, good. Okay, so all went well. The knob is dead. And I'll take the charge battery, I guess. says, how do you know where Dark Orb is targeting? Dark Orbs inherently always target the enemy with the lowest current health. It's a property of Dark Orbs and always happens when they evoke. Whoops, that was not the correct card to click. I don't think it matters much. Go for 14 health and a mummy hand to make things free when we play a power. That's certainly a great set of cards to have received. Or a great set of relics, excuse me, to receive. As well as two more max health, so 16 total, counting the mango. Could take go for the eyes, nice with kunai. I think I just want to skip though. Boost sequence could help on turn one. Alongside our Darkness Plus. Yeah. A Lizard Tail for a second chance at life, healing us to half of our very enormous max health. If we should die, I think as we are, we can take one more Elite here. Or one Elite here. It's three Slavers rather than two Slavers. And that's okay. He was supposed to use Speed Potion on this turn, though. Beautiful. I get to Dual Cast Glacier Fission. Dual Cast does 24 damage to the red guy. Again, targeting the lowest HP enemy. Note, it says right here on the tooltip, deal 24 damage to the enemy with the lowest HP. So, dual casted Dark Orb does 24 times 2 to this guy. Guaranteed. That's why I like Dark Orbs. Because they cool. Panacea biased. Rebound the cool headed. Play everything. Alright, we're in great shape now. I think it's a pretty easy one to miss, uh, NG. One, if you, if you don't play Defect a lot, it's uh, pretty easy to miss. And it, it's only explained to you in the tooltip of the Dark Orb, which you have to you have to mouse over and then read all of the text on these little tooltips, which not everybody will always do. Uh, and it's a particularly easy to miss this one. That's right, I gotta do some more Rogue Book. Maybe we'll do that today, later. Reading, that's illegal. Ah! 
<laughs> Every time I mention that about Dark Orb, somebody learns it for the first time. It's always someone. Alright, here's a, an example of a deck where the zap upgrade is actually pretty sweet. Thanks to Tony House. More max health! First the mango, then the pear. Second chance at barrage here. Honestly, that's a pretty good barrage. Yeah, let's take the barrage. I like uh, barrage is better than blizzard, quite frankly. And I'll take one last event. It's a snake plant, just like last time. Thanks, snake plant. You stinky, stinky son of a god. How dare you. Biased, then darkness, then fission. Then tempest. Okay, this feels way better than last run. Yeah? I think we can all agree on that. Get destroyed, Snake Plant. Thunder Strike? No. Tempting with Tempest, but no. Probably not even keeping this Tempest. Alright, Boar's a Collector. It's time to upgrade Panacea, but uh, Barrage is also on the menu here, upgrade wise. Can block vulnerable if I need to, thanks to Panacea Plus and the Ancient Potion. The goal in this turn is to get um, Panacea Plus Bias Cognition into play, and then. Win somehow. Win by blocking forever. The glacier here. Lose the dark orb. Or I can play strike and get a kunai activation. Play the glacier as it blocks for a bit more here. It'll take a fair bit of damage. But as soon as biased plus panacea are in play, might mean ancient potion now. Looks like we need some help. Yeah. And then Panacea here actually blocks most of the Collector's debuff. Which is pretty sweet. Just Frail, no weak, no vuln. Bitty blappity. Give them the zappity. Just regen all the orbs, too. But note that our overall damage is a little lacking, huh? Barrage is here. play the Hello World? I think so. Most of the common cards we'll get are pretty useful, and the fact that we are seeing one extra card per turn is not insignificant.
We'll certainly play it against Heart, for example. Can also generate more cards to work with the Kunai, like uh, Beam Cell, Zap, Go for the Eyes. Or not Zap. Uh, Beam Cell, Go for the Eyes, and Claw. Hmm. Other Core Surge. Amplify? <laughs> Double your powers. Now, if I could line up Amplify, Bias Cognition, Panacea reliably, that would be pretty dang powerful, but pretty hard to do. I think one more Core Surge is just going to make it uh, a little bit more no-nonsense to get our artifact down. Fluffy Mittens, thank you so much for two years! Freshest astronomy facts. Let's see if I can remember the name of this thing. Did you know that one of Saturn's moons, Enceladus, or Enceladus, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, um, is geysering ice into space. It's kind of like shooting water uh, in such a way that it has become one of the rings of Saturn itself. Uh, just a, a portion of the, the ring structure that's just crystallized ice shot out of the interior of this moon. Pretty cool. It's like enchiladas. Enchiladas. Hmm, that sounds tasty. That sounds really tasty. Buffer was also pretty good there, by the way. B-Box? Five transforms? Maybe. Dome or Sozu? Mm. Ice is in H2O ice? Yes, that's right. One of, there's actually quite a few moons over in, uh, by Saturn and Jupiter that are just essentially big snowballs. A big sphere of millions of tons of ice water. And such moons are one of the places we suspect are most likely to harbor Earth, uh, life outside of Earth. It's actually not a bad runic dome, now that I think about it. Dome means we can't see what the enemies are doing, but this deck blocks by passively generating frost orbs. And therefore, we're not, not actually nearly as required as uh, as usual to know what our foe is doing. It makes it a pretty good runic dome, actually, because we can turtle up behind frost orbs. Let's do it. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store. All while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Let's do it. We are unable to see the enemies. And that's okay. Heading to a shop early, we want to look for an artifact generating thingamajiggy, or maybe just another decent power, as well as more uh, striker move. would be very good. Go a couple of events along the way. Mm. Should have played Barrage first, technically. Didn't matter, though. Take seven. And then... Take more than seven. Please cease your assault, sir. Thank you. Definitely indicates to me our damage is a little bit low. Heck. Gotta stop drawing vision on turn one, though, man. Ooh. 
Okay, we should be immune to them now. They can no longer hurt us. And now they will die. Second speed potion, pretty good. Creative AI with a mummified hand. Lots of powers. Lots and lots and lots of powers. Second barrage is here. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. It's another way to scale. Now we just need a heat sinks. Or 222 gold thanks to the red mask. That's why you fight those stinky bandits in Act 2 if you encounter them, because the potential payoff later can be enormous. Sorry, Zap. Okay, orange pellets get. That means all of this focus is kind of irrelevant. All of these uh, artifacts are kind of irrelevant, but not a bad thing necessarily. Now, if we play a power attack and skill in the same turn, we remove all of our debuffs, and that's beautiful. That means this uh, bias cognition will always work when we draw it. That's a good thing. Is it ever the shuriken? Shuriken can absolutely make our barrage deal way more damage, and we already want to play three attacks in one turn because we have kunai. So I would say that's a pretty good shuriken, actually. Can that do a lot of damage? It sure can. Pick it up. Ah! Very expensive shuriken, it's true. But I assure you, well worth it. Ow. Do you mind not doing that for just like five minutes? Attack for up to 45 per turn, so until we're blocking for that much, we're not safe against this enemy. There's the 45. Okay, so not that much damage this turn. Fun little fact, Go for the Eyes is glowing as a card. That means we know Nemesis is attacking us. And because Nemesis can't do the 45 hit two times in a row, this must be the times three weaker attack. Easy. And then double buffer provides ultimate protection. Doubles the damage of every 10th attack we play. Compile Driver Plus. It's card draw, it's damage, and it helps us do the Shuriken Kunai thing. Yeah. Okay, we gotta be careful not to not to let it fall apart here at the very end, though. Ma never attacks on turn one, always opting to inflict a nasty debuff onto us, but we can just remove that with our orange pellets here. All we gotta do is play a power, an attack, and a skill. Simple, right? No. Power. 
skill. Attack. <laughs> Stop making creative AIs. Please? Or don't, you know? That's fine too. Thank you so much for 30 months, 3 metric years of support. Heck yeah. Let's see, I don't really need to fight another elite. I mean, uh, two more elites rather, we could. Pretty big chance of Reptomancer in the next one. Get a few cards upgraded, actually. Upgrade Defrag, upgrade something, and Recall. Upgrade Cool-Headed would be very, very good. Yes, upgrading Creative AI is also quite nice, so that we have more energy to work with. Nepter in chat says, let's hope the second boss isn't the Nerd Bird. Don't worry, we're actually completely fine against Awaken One, thanks to the Inserter. Because we're able to generate orb slots without having to actually play powers, we will outscale the bird so easily. You don't even know how easily. Now that said, it's all dependent on me not dying to this fight, which is unfortunately not a given. Good luck to me. At least they're all weak on turn one. Ouch, ouch, and ouch. They all went for the attack. Thanks, you jerks. How rude. Stinky gel worms. Very stinky indeed. Not attacking me. a capacitor for more orb slots. I just want the second defrag. I just want to keep the focus going. So upgrade defrag, upgrade defrag, and recall. Although, now I need healing? Hmm. Oh well. We got a lizard tail. We'll be fine. Maybe. Definitely we're good against giant head who is by far the easier of the elites to fight at the moment. Gives us three turns to set up. At the end of such time, we will be invulnerable. More or less. Let's this Tempest. That's what I call card draw. Good. Grab the void, don't draw that. And then at the end of the third turn, Giant Head begins to attack, starting with uh, 40 damage and then increasing by 5 per turn. 
uh, because of the inserter and all this focus, we can actually outscale Giant Head's offense and perpetually block this big beefy boy. Little difficulty. Especially when I'm generating three powers per turn. Let's go Storm. Eat rag. Eat rag. Barrage. Hologram. Barrage. This attack is for 50. Next one's 55. Again, not that it'll matter much. You can see how powerful we become. Just the just mass scaling of the creative AI. The the sheer ridiculosity of it all. Now we have a bag of prep for more cards on turn one, and if we wish, a second glacier. Uh, now that I have two copies of Defrag, I do wish a second glacier. Yes, yes, I would like to block forever. Shield and Spear looking scary here, yes, but the bag of preparation and the fission both will help a lot with that. I think you could really call this second glacier a cool pick for Yozen, making us have a, a very ice deck. And there's no chance the Spire will be able to win now. Unless, of course, we end up flaking out. Uh-oh. Actually, this is a pretty easy fight, thanks to the, uh, orange pellets. Always uses the debuff on turn one. Then on turn two and subsequent, this thing will attack us. Um, but if we purge the debuff, it's just gonna keep trying to reapply it every other turn and failing pretty miserably. So on this turn, it tries to debuff us, but to no avail. Uh, no frost? No, I'll frost next turn. Just kill it. Amplify is back and better than ever, but what about Hologram Plus here? Letting us put a card from the discard pile into our hand. Whatever that card might be. Both of these are pretty good. I'm a little leery about Amplify, though. If we draw Amplify at the wrong time, it's going to be a disaster. Whereas the Hologram is a lot more reliable. Grab the Hollow. And we could upgrade our second Defrag here. We can also do that in Act 4. Let's choose to rest. 33 health makes it a lot more likely that we get through uh, both of our bosses here without having to expend our Lizard Tail, which I'd really like to use next act, if at all possible. So, Jonu and Dekka have no randomness to their attack pattern. Dekka always attacks for 12 times 2 on turn 1. And Donu is buffing strength, and then now they alternate, essentially, every turn. What they are going to do. So Donu attacks, and De Deca blocks, then Deca attacks, and Donu blocks. Uh, Donu buffs, rather. So on and so forth they go. But meanwhile, we're gaining focus and an orb slot every two turns, so I think we're going to be coming out ahead here. Let's rebound to the hologram.
get rid of a dazed, or I could turbo make two more frosts. Let's do that. be in a while, but I'm in a position, might be a while, but I'm in a position to wait. And the creative AI will ensure that we stay eternally more powerful than these guys. Why do I attack the donut first? The donut buffs the strength of both bosses, whereas Decca adds dazed and um, blocks for them both. What that means is that if you kill Donu, the fight is usually pretty much over because they can no longer increase their damage, and so we'll be able to just perpetually stay behind uh, Decca here. But stay ahead of Decca's damage, rather. So now I win. That's an awful lot of damage for Barrage to do. Seventeen focus. Who needs that? Twenty-five focus or bust. Achievement get. Wait, I forgot to play a skill. My focus. GG. All right. Next up is the awakened one. Awakened one gains strength. Every single time we play a power card, which can definitely make this fight a little awkward, just initially. And yes, I'm playing that stinky regular deep rag. You heard me. Power, skill, attack. Skill again. What we're not going to do is play Creative AI or Hello Worlds. the third turn, so the Awakened One must use their multi-attack here. This is going to hurt a bit. Maybe I'll use one speed potion? No, we rested so that I wouldn't need to. This might hurt a bit, though. Ow. Hmm. Unfortunate bottom draw. Birds have got to die. Yesterday. Bird's taken care of, and with the Frost Orbs increasing now, should be completely fine. Multi-attack from the bird with 8 strength is going to be 14 by 4. 56 damage, which we block completely already. So we are completely safe.
Now, I could play the creative AI if I wanted to. Don't really need to. And then it wakes up and attacks for 40 plus its strength, which is only 48 when I'm blocking for 70 per turn here. Now I can play powers. So I will. Have even lined up for this Spire Spear and Spire Shield fights. Two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the Spire, the source of all this blocking? You deal 20 21 damage. You're still living in the past, but perhaps, perhaps, you can get where you need to go. And we're down 17 health. That's a lot of health to not rest for. Um, but I really want to upgrade Defrag, so we're doing it. Maddie G says, is there any rhyme or reason to that heart damage? Yes, it is the score of your run. Your current point total. Points are gained by perfecting boss elite fights, by meeting certain conditions, such as having 50 cards in your deck or having 25 relics. Um, and you can also get points by getting four more copies of the same card called a collector bonus. This is 10 HP. Frozen Eye could be very nice, letting us see the exact order of the draw pile. Could help me get uh, important stuff in play very early. I think that's quite nice. Frozen Eye or 10 health. I, think I like the, t the Frozen Eye more. Yeah, let's go Frozen Eye. And I'm not taking that self-repair. Frozen Eye and immediately forgetting it. Classic. Hello World Turbo Glacier. At least we're drawing Glacier next turn. And I can even charge battery, darkness compile river. Yes, we'll do that. Okay, I'll use one of the two speed potions here. We'll go... Battery, Darkness, Compile Driver. And now we can play the powers. Thanks to Mummy Hand, we get to play them all. Oh, but order, though. Using one focus per turn. Hmm. That's slightly awry. I got a new biased? Easy, then. Attack, power, skill. Okay, that worked out. Despite the slight misplay last round. I'd have to look at that turn again. I'm not sure what the right order would be. Might have just had to play the biased in a way that the mummy hand procs don't guarantee line up. I think it would have been fine, though. Just give yourself more biased. Easy. Spire Shield is attacking me on this turn, so we face this way. And 
then basically nobody will hit me this turn. Incursion deals 60 damage to fire shields. Interesting. I'll allow it. Very intriguing. Cast almost kills. We have Sundial next turn. Expire Spear is attacking me for a lot next turn. Let's just turn back around then. Yeah, so now we're being attacked for a lot. Hmm. Twelve by four from Spire Spear, lots from Spire Shield too. Plus 20 damage if I play Darkness. So 66, 86. That'll do. Here we go. Darkness, Hologram, Darkness, Recursion, this Dark Orb. Finish the job. And then block. There we go. Goodness, Claw was here. Who knows what it might? Have, who knows what could have happened otherwise? And then another big attack on this turn, but he did. Okay, we have seventy-five health, two potions and a lizard tail, and an emotion chip. If we lose health during the previous turn, trigger the passive ability of all of our orbs on the next turn. We also have, guess what? Consume inserter, or we have a blizzard. Take your pick. Although quite frankly, with how much focus we already have, I actually don't think we want the consume. Or blizzard, actually, I just want to max out. Okay, biased is pretty early on, that's good. You're gonna draw some statuses though. Okay to take some damage this turn. So that'll give us frost at the start of the next turn. Okay, I understand. So I just want to draw one. Cold snap, compile driver, play the stuff. Beat of death will trigger a motion chip, that's correct. do some very silly things with the darkness. I'm actually not going to be playing it at all. I want to get our frost in play here. Heck. Okay, I wouldn't say that went well, but we got plenty of health. Really would have liked a mummy hand to make glacier free. The good news is we do get to draw the bias cognition because none of the five statuses got put into this hand. So we go attack, then power, then we play a skill, 
and all the debuffs are gone. No biased, no vulnerable, no frail, no weaken, no nothing. Just invulnerability. I could rebound the Glacier. I think I'm going to Glacier stack. Make sure we don't take any damage here. It's the second attack turn. Let's do the following. Orbs. Ants. Okay, can I draw two? No. Can I draw one. Wouldn't call this the world's greatest turn. Maybe you shouldn't have gotten rid of those frost orbs, actually. is Glacier, so just come powder over into Glacier? That sounds good. Ailey's, thank you so much for seven months of tier one. It's 40 block. Um, we'll be a little bit short if it's the multi-hit or the single hit, but that's fine because of the motion ship. Just take a little bit, then we fully block this easy peasy. Good. In fact, I'll even play this storm, because I think it'll make my life a lot easier. Sixty damage here. Yes? Good. One additional creative AI, please. Now we'll take two random powers per turn. Here with four points of strength, the heart either attacks for 49 off the singular attack or for six times 15, a total of 90. So we must block for 90 if we wish to be safe this turn. Easier said than done. Since that was the single attack, we know this must now be the multi-attack, so there is 90 damage exactly headed my way here. That I could easily deal with. Then no attack on this turn. even intentionally take Beat of Death so that I get the extra stuff next turn. Let's do that. Taking the Beat of Death on purpose there to activate the Emotion Chip. Sundial coming in next turn. Get him a motion chip. GG. This fight is over. Be free, my lizard tail friend. Be free. GG. Finally get there. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.